given a set of options, checkboxes allow you to select all that apply. We'll be creating that in React Native using the basic touchable opacity, the view and test component, some icons from Expo Vector icons, and also some basic logic. At the end, we add the submit button so that we can alert and see how the values will look like when they get to the server. Link to the source code will be in the description. Starting work in the app.js file of my React Native or Expo project, I will display an instruction test saying that I can choose all options that apply. I will style this text using some styling that I defined earlier. This will give it a margin at the bottom, adjust the font size and also the color. Once we have that, we will start to work on the checkbox component itself. For this, we will create it under the components directory, specifically in the inputs directory. We will call this file checkbox. Here, we will start by setting up a checkbox component, return a fragment and make sure to export it. As a placeholder, we can import the text components from React Native and return some text. In the index file under the inputs directory, we make sure to import the checkbox and export it. This will make it accessible in the app.js file. Now we move to the app.js file and over here we import the checkbox component. With that done, we go just below our instruction text and then we can render the checkbox component. To proceed, we want to pass all the properties to the checkbox that we need for it to work properly. The first one is options. This will be an array of objects that will contain all the options that we want to provide to the user. For this, each object will have a label and a value. The label is what will be displayed and the value is what will be passed back to the server. So for the start, we will have three options of instruments. Next, we want to create a state variable for our checkboxes. This will be used to monitor the current values that have been checked. So for this state, we can name it to match the values we are dealing with and this will be an array. For the state variable, we will pass it to the checkbox via the checked values property. Also, we will pass the set function via the unchange property. In addition to all this, we will pass some additional styles by setting some margin at the bottom. Once we've done that, we can head back to the checkbox component. Over here, to proceed, we destructure all the properties that we pass to the checkbox. Also, we import some additional components that we will need from React Native. For the style sheet, I'll create the style sheet object. However, for the styling, I'll paste some styles that I defined earlier. This will help us to focus more on the React Native part. The main component we want to return for the checkbox is the view component. For this, we'll give it our container style so that it covers the entire width of the screen. In the situation where we receive additional styles, like how we added additional styles to the checkbox, we'll pass that to the view as well. Now working with the options received, we want to return a touchable opacity for each of the options. We can do this with the help of the map method. We'll pass a function to this and the parameter will provide us access to the option. It will give us access to the label and value properties. Back in the checkbox component, we return the touchable opacity. In this, we will display the label in a text component. We proceed to pass some of the styles to the touchable opacity and we also style the text as well. This will change the background color of the option and make some additional changes. Now we have the text displayed, but to indicate whether an option has been checked or not, we want to add an icon. So we import material icons from Expo Vector Icons. With this, if you are using Expo, you don't have to install anything. However, if you are using bare React Native, you might have to install this or use React Native icons. Now just before the text component, we render the icon. The initial icon we want to use here is the checkbox outline icon. We'll give this a size and also an initial color. 
at this point, we want to handle what happens when a checkbox is pressed. This will be handled in the press property of the touchable opacity. When a checkbox is pressed, we want to add that option to our checked values. So to start this, we'll make a copy of the check values that we received. This we'll call updated check values. With this done, we push the current value of the option to the updated check values array. Now to update the original check value state, we call the unchanged function and pass the updated check values. Even with this in place, we see no changes when we press on the options. To fix this, we need to adjust the styling when a checkbox has been selected and is active. So to start, we need to determine when a checkbox is active. To get this result, we'll check whether the updated check values include the value of the current option. Getting true means that the current option has been checked and needs to be styled differently. Starting with the touchable opacity, when the current option is active, we want to style it differently. So we'll start by maintaining the current checkbox style and add an additional style. This will change the background color and make it stand out. Currently, all our options are checked so the background color changes for all of them. Next up, for an active option, we adjust the icon as well. First of all, we change the icon from the outline of the checkbox to the checkbox itself. Also, we adjust the color as well to make it stand out. Next, we do the same for the text, adjusting the style to make it stand out a bit. We keep the current style and add an additional one. This changes the color of the text. With this done, we see that all our options are checked. However, if we press on them, they don't get unchecked, so we need to handle that. To deal with this, when an option is checked and we press on it, instead of adding it back to the array again, we want to take it out. We can determine which option is active using the active variable we declared earlier. Now when the option is pressed, we first want to check whether it is active. If it is active, we want to update the updated checked values. This time we will filter it and we'll keep only the values which are not equal to the value of the current option being rendered. The filter method iterates over the content of the check values array, so we compare each of the checked values to the current value of the option. Once we've done that, we conclude by returning the unchanged function and passing the updated checked values. With that done, we can now uncheck the options and check them again. When working with the map method like we are doing, we always need to add keys to the main element that's returned. So for our case, we can make use of the value of the option as the key. With this done, we want to conclude by adding a submit button so that we can alert to see how the data will look like when it gets to the backend. We will do this in the app.js file. In a previous episode, we worked on radio buttons. While doing that, we created a reusable button that can help us to alert the selected options. We made use of the touchable opacity and test components. We then apply some basic styles to make it look nice. We using the button here, we can modify the alert message to match our current use case. This time around, we are working with chosen instruments and not fruit. So we update the preceding text and also the state variable itself. Once we do that, we can play around with the options and we'll see how they will look like when they are submitted to the server. Link to the full source code will be put in the description below. Thanks for watching.